this tutorial, we're going to learn to make the scarf that I am wearing right now. It's called Frango Sampler Scarf, and I'm using KPC Novo Merino Aran yarn for this. If you'd like uh, to get your free pattern and to take a look at the different colors available in this yarn, go ahead and click the little I in the upper right hand corner at any time during this video, and that will take you to my website. Um, so the yarn that I'm using is from KPC, and they sponsored this and the free pattern. Thank you very much, KPC. And I'll show you the yarn colors that I used. KPC has such great packaging too. Here are the colors that I used and there's something really great when you go to their website and you follow the link and you go to their website for their Nova Merino yarn they have a ton of colors and this scarf uses six different colors and on their website you can pick your colors and click the mix and match button and it'll put them in this separate little window where you can throw just different colors in there and mix things up. And I was able to do something I think pretty spectacular to pick six different colors that I would not normally pick. Um, I'm really proud of myself for that because I normally just pick greens and soft colors and this time I really went for a fall color palette and I'm pretty proud of myself. When you look at the prices on the um, KPC website, keep in mind that when you first go there, they're in Hong Kong dollars, which make everything look really, really expensive to uh, Americans and Europeans. So you can click the little tab in the upper right hand corner of the website and change it to um, your local currency so it'll make more sense. Anyway, this yarn has, um, this yarn is escaping, this yarn is uh, 100% merino and it is heavy and it makes this great thick warm scarf. I was really happy with the way it turned out and uh, there's a fringe on this scarf and the reason that I added this, you know, there are so many guys out there who knit who are always asking me to put out more patterns for guys. And so I kept guys in mind when I designed this one and I added fringe to it because there's some knitting guru somewhere. I maybe Elizabeth Zimmerman, who said that men love fringe on their scarves. And so I added fringe just because she said that. Um, this scarf is, I would say, an advanced beginner level, skill level. It's knit in the round. Um, I, use a per, I use a provisional cast on so that the two ends are exactly the same. Either they're both bound off with a three needle bind off, another technique I'll cover in this video. We're going to cover a few different things, um, knitting in the round, like I said, the provisional cast on, making the fringe, keeping good tension between knit and purl stitches, changing yarn colors, I'm trying to think of all the things we're going to cover in this. Um, lots of stuff. If you're an experienced knitter, you'll probably find this pretty easy to work. Um, again, just click the little I in the upper right hand corner to get your free pattern and uh, order your yarn. Um, and again, many thanks to KPC. And next up, we'll start with the provisional cast on. We are ready to get going on this scarf. Um, let's, you know what I didn't do in the first section is cut away to a picture of the whole scarf. But <laughs> let's go ahead and do that now. We can cut away to a picture of the whole scarf. You can see the whole thing and the fringe and everything else. Since I'm sitting down, you can't see as much of it on me, but we are going to right now take a close up look at some of the um, different stitches we have going on. So let's take a look. So the fringe is last, but this is broken up. The reason it's called a sampler scarf is because it's broken up with different stitches. We have stockinette, and um, this is a chevron stitch, and more stockinette, and a yarn over, lace stitch, stockinette, seed stitch. Um, all the stitches are pretty easy to work in the pattern. You just change colors, and we have garter stitch. That's a uniform thing separating each section. It's pretty interesting for the knitter. Um, here's the center. It's pretty interesting for the knitter and um, I, th I have a feeling it's going to look really different um, as I see, as we see it come out in different colors and different people's ideas. So the first thing we're going to do is a provisional cast on and I use 16 inch circular needles and you can use uh, magic loop if you like. You can also use double pointed needles I suppose but it'll go a lot faster with circular needles. And you need some scrap yarn, and this is not even the Novo Merino. This is a different yarn, just some leftover worsted weight yarn. Tie a regular knot in the needle because we want to be able to tell the slip knot end from the other end. 
and make a slip knot and crochet chain a few stitches. Okay, now we're going to do a provisional cast on directly onto the needle. You know, I have so many provisional cast on tutorials out there, but everyone seems to like this one the best, so this is the one we're going to use. Uh, put the needle over the yarn and reach, reach over the needle with the crochet hook, grab the yarn and pull it through, and don't split it like I just did. We're going to start over. This is kind of a splitty yarn. I might have done better to choose a smoother yarn. So reach over with the yarn and pull it through that loop. And then you want to yarn back and do the same thing. And be, after each stitch, you yarn back. You're going to do this 88 times. I'm not going to do it 88 times in this video. Just give you the idea. Then you have, um, once you have your 88, you will chain a few more, and then you can break the yarn and just, I don't have scissors, so I'm just gonna pull this yarn through, and then pull it through the last loop. And then it's very clear which is the slip knot end because you have a knot in that yarn and which is not the slip knot end. So, I should have grabbed some scissors, but now I'm gonna break all the yarn. So once you have that done, the pattern explains this very clearly. Um, you're going to start knitting at, without joining in the round. And you will take your yarn. I'm actually using the Novo Merino now, which is such a beautiful Merino yarn. Put your needle through the first loop on there. And then just take your working yarn, just fold it over and make a loop. Put that loop on the back needle and pull it through. And your new yarn is attached. And you're going to work the first knit round without joining in the round. And then you will join in the round on round two. So this is a tiny sample of how you're going to work the provisional cast on. So the, the provisional cast on is actually really easy. Um, well, it's not very difficult, but this is the really easy part. The more difficult part comes when we're taking it out to retrieve these live stitches. And that's why we're doing it. We want to have the beginning of the scarf and the end of the scarf match exactly. So we want to bind off both ends. And this is the secret for how to do that. Okay, so we have the provisional cast on finished. And you'll follow the pattern um, because you work, start off really easy with some stockinette, and then you're going to change color to um, work a chevron stitch. And the first thing I want to show you, I'm not actually uh, I don't actually need to change color right here, but I cut the yarn so that I would change color so I could show this to you. Um, I'm going to stick with the same color, but this is the technique you'll use when you change color. Do the same thing you did when you attach the yarn for the provisional cast on. Just fold the yarn over and put that loop on the back needle and pull it through and your new yarn is attached. Then I usually work like four stitches. And then because this is knit in the round, these ends, we're not going to spend a lot of time weaving these ends in. We are mostly just going to double knot. I actually triple knotted. Double knot and then pull pretty tightly and then triple knot and pull really tightly. And that's secure enough. And then really, I didn't weave in any ends in this. I just cut those and short. So that's what you're going to do to attach the new, the new ball of yarn. Because you change yarn a lot in this, but you don't have a lot of ends to weave in. Now the thing that I want to show you now is um, how to keep good tension between knit and purl stitches, especially in the chevron pattern. And I've got the chevron pattern here. You can see it is Knits and purls in the same row, nothing else. There's nothing else going on. No cables or twists or yarn overs or anything. And the, um, the way to make anything like this, anytime you have knits and purls in the same row and it's not 
just a knit two purl two or knit one purl one rib. This is a trick I'm going to show you on how to keep that really tidy. So I am ready to start this chevron stitch and I actually need to back up. <laughs> it's demonstrating how to change color. Um, in this first row of the chevron stitch, I knit one and now I need to P7. And so the technique is going to show itself right away here. I'm going to yarn forward to purl and then purl that first stitch. Now this is the exact spot where you want to watch your tension because just the action of yarning forward to purl the stitch creates a drag of yarn there that um, will make make the space between this knit stitch and this purl stitch greater than the knit stitches next to each other. So that's what we're going to solve here. So I purled a stitch and I'm actually going to yarn back and tug to tighten up that purl stitch. I'm going to show this again and then I'm going to yarn forward because I actually need to purl seven. Okay, now I'm going back to knit stitch yarn back, knit a stitch. Now I'm going to purl seven again. So I yarn forward, purl that stitch, yarn back and tug. You see how much slack I picked up there? Yarn forward and purl the other six. Yarn back and knit, yarn forward and purl the first stitch. Yarn back and tug, and that's the technique. Okay. The rest of it is really pretty easy. The, the pattern explains exactly um, the different stitch combinations to use throughout the sampler. This is, I think, the one, the little technique that will make the scarf look good all the way through is if you can keep good tension in the shadow chevron part, shadow chevron part. Uh, because the rest of it is actually really pretty easy, like knit two together and yarn over or seed stitch, which is just a knit purl. I didn't make any of them very difficult, but they have um, a strong impact because of the color change and because of uh, the texture change. So it's all explained in the pattern. Um, next up, we're going to remove the provisional cast on, do the three needle bind off and the fringe. So most of this scarf is just going around and around and changing up your stitches and changing color. And I thought it was really fun to make and I thought the yarn felt really nice the whole time I was doing it too, which makes a big difference. Um, at any point in the scarf, you know, I have just a little bit done here. At any point in the scarf, you can remove the provisional cast on and do the three needle bind off to close it up. I did it pretty early on because uh, this was just kind of a sloppy thing flopping around and I wanted to see how nice it would look when it was finished. You can wait till the whole thing is knit and remove the provisional cast on or do it early. Um, that's what we're going to do now. In this section, we're going to cover the provisional cast on, three needle bind off, and the fringe. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I am using, like I always do, much bulkier yarn and bigger needles to demonstrate this part. And I have just a little bit done here. It's uh, actually narrower than the um, narrower than the sample, uh, narrower than, than the, the actual scarf, just as a sample. And what we want to do is remove this and give ourselves live stitches so we can do the three needle bind off. And you want to start with the non-slip knot end, and that's why we tied the knot in that yarn, the non-slip knot end will come out, just pull that end through the last loop, and then you can bop, 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 unzip it. Let me get a needle ready here. The first stitch is wonky. The yarn runs through the first stitch, but pick it up anyway and pull the yarn out. And then from here on, it's, it's the same, it's, it's easy. You take a look at the knit stitches. They look like V's and they match my nail polish. That wasn't on purpose. They look like V's. We want to pick up, we want to go under the right leg of each V like this. And do your best not to grab the waist yarn, just grab the V. And I like to pick up a whole bunch at once. Right 
If you ever get lost to where you are, take a look and look for the V and grab the right leg. Okay, so once you've done that, you can pull out the waist yarn and it should just unzip like this. I was kind of hoping we get a snag so I could show you. Um, let me do a few more. We'll see if I get a snag. Let me try again. Nope, no snag. I'm making it look so easy. It really is easy, but usually there's a little snag. And here's what you do if that happens. If there's a snag, you can just cut it as long as it's in the waist color yarn, not the working yarn. You can always just cut the waist yarn. Usually what happens is the yarn will split. You'll get your yarn between one ply. You can just cut that and it's no problem because you're going to throw that waist yarn away anyway. So that's how that um, you're going to retrieve the stitches and then um, I'm going to get to the, I just made a mess with that other end, but that's okay. I'm going to get to the end here. And we're going to pretend that I am completely finished with this scarf and I'm ready to bind it off. So I'm at the beginning of the round and I want half of my stitches on, I'm not counting, but half of my stitches on one half of the needle, half on the other with some cord sticking out. And I want to take a needle in the same size as what I've been working with. And this is the three needle bind off. It's awesome. It looks so good. It's going to bind these stitches off and seam them at the same time. Put your needle through the front stitch and through the back stitch. Wrap the working yarn around the, the back needle. Pull it through one, pull it through two, and then pull both stitches off. Okay, we'll do it again. both stitches off. Now is the bind off part. Once you have two stitches on the right needle, take your back needle and just like a normal bind off, pull one stitch over the other, leaving you with just one stitch. Then we do it again. Front needle, back needle, wrap, pull through one, pull through two and off. Then take your back needle and pull one stitch over the other. This is such a cool technique. It leaves kind of a ridge, so it's, it's not a good substitute for like Kitchener stitch for grafting the toes of socks or something, but for something like this, it's perfect. Okay, that's the technique. And then once you get all the way across all the stitches, you're left with the loop. You just break the yarn Break the yarn and pull that end through the last loop and tighten it. And I have an example where that shows that better. It's this one here. This is the, the shortest scarf in the world that I've knit and bound off. I did the provisional cast on in one side, removed that, and did the three needle bind off here, and then did the three needle bind off on the other side. You can't, actually can't tell which is which anymore because they're identical. It looks so good. Um, so you will end up with, you will end up with some ends sticking out. This is what you can do with those ends. Just thread your tapestry needle and poke them back in the work. And we have essentially with this scarf, a tube. You can run this needle through the inside of the tube so it's not sticking out anywhere. Pull it out on the other side, really anywhere. then cut it short. And when you straighten it out, that end is inside and lost and never to be thought of again, which is awesome because that was an easy way to deal with what could be some, some annoying ends, nothing to weave in. <coughs> okay, so now we're gonna talk about the fringe. And uh, the easiest way to do fringe is to cut yourself a piece of cardboard at, as long as you'd like the fringe to be, or a little longer than you'd like the fringe to be. I have a five inch uh, square here. And 
An easy way to make the, the fringe uniform is to just start wrapping. And just be careful that you don't start by wrapping really tightly and then loosen up. Just be consistent. And we have, there were 88 stitches around and 44 on each side after we did the three needle bind off. So you'll need 88. Well, depending on how you want the fringe to go, you can skip if you want. But we'll need 88 of these wraps. And I'm just going to do a little sample. I did them in batches. I didn't wrap 88 all at once. So once you have it wrapped like this, just cut across one end. And I missed a little bit there. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to trim it when it's finished. All right, so here's the tiniest scarf in the world and the crochet hook. Um, you can start with the V's facing you. You can see the V's facing. Um, I'm going to do this one this way and this one this way. It looks better than trying to do it on this side. I hope that made sense. <laughs> Have the V's facing you like this because they're easier to see. And take your crochet hook and go under both legs of the V of the three needle bind off and take one of your fringe and you can either go down into it or up into it. I Just be consistent and you'll see why. Fold your fringe in half and pull it through. And then this is a good time to line everything up. Grab the two ends and pull it through the loop and tighten it up. See that? And then the next one, go under both legs of the V, fold your fringe in half, pull it through, make sure everything's lined up, pull the two ends through and tighten it up. I'll do one more. Line it up. Whoops. There we go. I didn't want to twist it. So you have the option, actually, it, you have the option of holding more than one uh, piece of yarn together at a time. I wanted my fringe to be just kind of this light, even thing, but you can make it, you can, you know, do two through each loop and skip one between. You can do just about anything, but that this was a style I chose for this one. And when you're finished, you end up with something that's a little jagged. Um, for this, I would actually want my sewing scissors, which I, which I don't have in the studio with me today, but uh, big scissors to cut and trim and, and even, it, even it all up so the fringe looks really um, straight. And one of the great things about the uh, KPC Novo Merino is the weight of the yarn, and the fringe is just so... Uh, so swingy because this this yarn has such great weight to it besides making a really warm snuggly scarf it kind of gives the, the fringe uh, a cool look anyway many thanks to kpc for sponsoring this video and the free pattern again just click the little i in the upper right hand corner to go to my website for all the information you need and have some fun mixing and matching different colors on the kpc website good luck